right. Well, what's up, everybody? Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me. I have an RTA that I wanted to talk about today. It comes from Vapor DNA. It's called the Silver Play RTA. And I just, I've been having a little bit of a love affair with this Silver Play RTA. Not necessarily like the way you build it or the way you wick it or the way it's constructed or the way that it all goes together, but the vape that I get from this is just. I mean, spectacular. Flavor is on point. Airflow is beautiful. It's a real restricted, restricted lung inhale. You could try to do some mouth to lung type of vaping with this particular tank, but I don't feel like this tank is a real good example of a real solid mouth to lung where this tank really shines is in that sort of restricted lung inhale. It's a flavor banger. Awesome. It's just an awesome vape. It is a real weird RTA. There's a little bit of a learning curve on there. It's very retro. It is very old school, but you'll see all of that when we get up close. So let's do that now. Quick short, up and closey time, a go. All right, cool. Well, all of these parts down here represent the new Silver Play RTA. There's kind of a lot going on. There's a tank. There's this little wicking adjustment two-part thingy that's just, it's held on by O-rings. It's weird. It's all around a little bit weird, and it takes a little bit of getting used to. It's a very, very old school design, especially even just looking at that deck, right? Really simple deck. It's just two screws and you capture your leads underneath the screws. I like round wire on these kind of decks, but you could probably use like a very simple single core fuse Clapton, maybe a dual core fuse Clapton, anything bigger than that. I feel like it's just not going to fit under these screws. And I mean, things like, uh, you know, frame staples or aliens or anything like that. I, I would just, I would just stick to round wire or a fuse Clapton if you really want to get fiddly and try to get a fuse Clapton in there. I'm sure it could be done. I mean, I I'm sure it could be done. I don't love these screws on the deck. They're kind of oddly shaped. And when I was installing this round wire build, which is 24 gauge nichrome anarchist wire around a three millimeter, I found that when I was trying to put the leads underneath the screws and screw the screws down, they would kind of like spit out my coil every once in a while. And that's kind of a huge bummer. You really kind of have to earn this vape in my opinion. So yeah, that's just the build I have in there right now. And you can kind of see right here, this is where your airflow is going to be coming in. And these little discs right here are interchangeable. You can unthread these and it, it's kind of a little bit of a pain in the ass, but it can be done. I can, I could take this out right now if I wanted to, but I don't want to. But this one sort of has uh, seven bigger holes in it, but you get other ones as well. You get these, this sort of like honeycomb pattern, which is going to stiffen up the airflow even more. And then you get these slots, which these slots and these holes, the ones I have in here now are, are very similar. I mean, airflow wise, they, they are basically the same. The only one that really I noticed any difference on was this sort of honeycomb pattern here, and it really stiffened up an already like restricted lung hit on this tank. The bottom has a nice smooth AFC. It stops in the fully closed position, stops in the fully open position. It doesn't click or anything in between, but you can kind of set it, and it's, it's smooth enough and glidy enough to adjust it, but it's also firm enough that I think it'll stay in place. Let's say you you wanted a rocket like half closed or half open depending on your point of view you can set it there and it will uh, it will definitely stay there so yeah let's uh, let's get these coils glowing and let's start to assemble this tank coils glowing super evenly I'm just gonna grab some cotton bacon and uh, thread it through those coils. RTAs are always a little bit of a balancing act between like juice viscosity and coil diameter and how tight your cotton is in there. I like some resistance. I like to feel like that cotton is nice and packed in there. A lot of people, when they're using, you know, RTAs and stuff like this, they'll take something sharp like scissors or a pair of tweezers and kind of fluff out the ends like this. I've never felt the need to do that, and I don't really think you even need to do it in the Silver Play RTA. So you're gonna come to these two pieces right here, and these two pieces just are held together by pressure. You kind of slip one over the other. I'm gonna have to stick my finger in here, but you're supposed to be able to adjust this, right? So that's 
fully open. Your wick's gonna be running right through this channel right here. And if you have a three millimeter coil, you can kind of just leave this as is, no adjustment needed. But let's say you're running a two millimeter coil and you're gonna have less wick going through it. You would kind of adjust it maybe something like that to sort of close that down a little bit. So what we're gonna do is these are just held on by O-rings. So I'm gonna pull these wicks up, sort of like the troll doll technique of wicking, those like, uh, you know, old goblin mini RDAs or RTAs rather. And then this kind of just presses down in there, presses down onto the O-rings. Then you can grab your wicks and kind of set them in those notches right there, perfect. Perfect. And like I said, these all just kind of sit on O-rings. So if you need to adjust this, you need to close this off. You need to pinch those wicks down a little bit. If you have a smaller diameter coil in there for any reason, you can do it. You can do it real easily. Me, meh, I'm just gonna leave it. I'm just gonna leave it open because that's how it's been working for me. And then you have this little threaded uh, top cap portion of your little uh, housing right here. And that just uh, screws down. You can always check on things. You can see right there, there's your coil, there's your wicks. If you need to make any other adjustments, maybe open this up, maybe close this off, maybe rotate all of it. So your wicks aren't, you know, at a weird angle like this. You want that juice flowing freely. So I try to keep it as horizontal, symmetrical as possible. And you can use scissors, but I sometimes use wire clippers, especially on this RTA, but I'm just gonna cut this cotton as, as flush as I possibly can with the side of this chimney. Boom. Boom, just like that. So you can kind of see, yeah, right there. That's your wick, it leads right to your coil. And that's, uh, you know, kind of gonna be out in the tank like that. Of course, before you fill up your tank, you're gonna wanna juice up this. Juice up your coil, juice up those wicks on the inside. Yeah, perfect. Since this is completely taken apart, uh, I'm gonna put the glass on here and then we put the top on here as well. There's a threaded side and you can just kind of screw this together. I like this part to be extra, extra tight. So I like to take a pair of tweezers and kind of just put it in here and make sure that that's snug. I just want this part to be tight and I'll explain why in a second. The reason I want that to be tight is so that these notches and these tabs can kind of just come together and you can close it off like that. And then when you go to open it, just the notches and tabs are going to, you know, release. You're not gonna accidentally start unscrewing anything from down here, which is why I like to tighten that down with tweezers. But now it's simple enough. The rest of the tank can kind of go on just like this. You got two big kidney shaped juice fill holes right there. So you just bleh, 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 bleh. Uh, and yeah, done, full. The top cap, really super easy to get on. You just let the notches and the tabs sort of find each other. I just put it on here and twist it until you feel them kind of like uh, set down like that. It'll just set down and you'll know it. And then you can give it one more like half a twist and that's it. It's sealed up, you're good to go. Standard 510 drip tip, feels real comfortable, looks really, I mean, Super dorky, dude. I honestly can't stand the way this drip tip looks, but thankfully it's just standard 510, so you can use basically any standard 510 drip tip on there. That DHD already looks better. So yeah, it's a little bit complicated. There's a little bit of a learning curve, but it's not crazy. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna get back out to normal view. We're gonna vape this guy. I just can't get over the flavor that this tank produces. I have a 0 0.42 ohm single coil, 24 gauge Nichrome Anarchist on a three millimeter. You just saw me wick it. It's wicking flawlessly. I mean, flawlessly. I have not come close to anything from, you know, anything resembling a dry hit on this tank. It just feels dense. It just feels saturated and it just feels flavorful every single time. Now, maybe if you were using a different diameter coil, if you had like a two millimeter in there, you might have to adjust your wicking a little bit. It's, it's, it's a little bit of a fiddly tank all around, just trying to like get the right center. Little airflow thing, you can experiment around with those, although they're the most pain in the ass thing to experiment around with because you have to take your build out to swap out the discs in the bottom, and I find that to be a huge bummer. Thankfully, the one I put in there is the one I really like with this particular build. So let's do a few pros and cons. Pros, 
the vape. The vape from this tank is fan fucking fantastic it's just it's just a fantastic restricted lung hit i don't know if i've mentioned that enough it's <laughs> it's just fantastic and best of all it doesn't need a whole mess of wattage to really get cooking this is sitting on top of the squid industries double barrel 0.42 30 watts that's it 30 watts and you're good. It's warm, it's flavorful, it's incredible. It's an incredible vape. I like the size of it. It's only a two mil capacity, but I do like the size of it. I do also like the top fill system on this. I find it real easy. It's just those two notches and two tabs and you can give it one twist and it's open. Fill your tank up, you can give it one twist and it's closed. Real effortless, real mess free, real leak free. I also really like the aesthetics of this RTA. I think it looks real cool. I think it's a real slick looking RTA. I don't love the big dorky swoopy drip tips that it comes with, even though they're real comfortable in the mouth. I just, I just, I just hate the way that those drip tips look on here. They do come in a few different colors. This is like the grayish gunmetal one, but they do a full stainless steel one and they do a bluish one as well. And out of all of those, I like this the most. I like this gunmetal the most. Some cons on this RTA, it's real old school, man. This design just feels really old, kind of a little bit old and a little bit outdated. It's got that real simple two post, two screws on the deck sort of uh, build. It's a lot like a K-Fun. Wicking it can be weird. It's got those two sort of like, uh, you know, rotating sleeves around each other. It's just kind of, it's just kind of weird all around. It's, it's a little weird to build. It's a little weird to wick. It's a little weird to assemble it all together. But if you can get past that learning curve, you're gonna have a stellar vape. It's also only a two mil capacity tank and with a restricted lung hit, you're not gonna be plowing through juice like you would with some other RTAs or with like a big honking sub ohm tank. You're gonna be using a little bit less juice, but I would still love to see a little bit more capacity on this. Even if they made it just a little bit taller to accommodate another two mils at the top, I think that would be just fantastic. I would love this if it was a four mil capacity. With a two mil capacity, if this is going to be the only tank that you use like all day long, you're going to be refilling it fairly often. I would say four, maybe five times throughout the day you're going to be refilling this. But that vape experience and that flavor, it it's good. I'll stop gushing. I'm just going to say it's damn, damn good. So let's get down to brass tacks here. You're gonna need your vape budget hands if you're looking at this Vapor DNA Silver Play RTA. Eh, maybe a little bit, but not really. On Vapor DNA, it's about 45 bucks for this RTA. So a little bit of vape budget hands are necessary. It's not in the like, uh, you know, $70 range, but it's certainly not in the like cheap enough just to buy it, just to try it out sort of range. Now, if we're gonna play the Aliens game or the FDA game where they come and take everything I have and I have nothing left to vape, is the Silver Play RTA something I would seek out and buy right away? For 45 bucks, you're goddamn right I would. This has been, honestly, my favorite RTA of this year so far. It just gives me such a good vape experience and it gives me such a good vape experience that I can kind of overlook the slightly weird fiddly deck and wicking system and the really kind of retro feel of the internals of this. I'll gladly put up with a slightly weird deck. I'll gladly put up with like slightly weird wicking in order to have this high quality of a vape experience. I can't stress that enough. I, I love the vape I get from this Silver Play 